Hello everyone. So following on from the Amplify Masterclass video, we have a kind of topic here, which is um, a little bit like amplifiers, but relates more to satellite testing or satellite payload testing. And one of the things we see is many low Earth orbit satellites now being developed and mainly to kind of handle internet connections or high speed data connections in rural areas. So to explain a bit more about this, I have with me another Florian, not the usual Florian Ramian today, but Florian Gable, who will take us through some of the topics around LEO satellite testing. Florian, hello. Hi, Lauren. Hi, everybody. Basically, I want to tell you that you should test as you fly. So you already said um, it can happen that when you do some measurements, you're measuring the performance of um, your device on the test for this very signal that you're using for the test, but maybe not for the signals that the device on the test will see when it's when it's actually operated. So in the case of uh, an amplifier that's part of a payload of a LEO satellite, this means um, it may be a big advantage to test the amplifier with the signal, with the real satellite signal that the amplifier will operate on. We can jump right into it. I, I can show you some, some measurements uh, that we can do here. So what I've prepared is a combination of an SMW 200A vector signal generator and an FSW signal and spectrum analyzer. And what we're doing here is um, with the SMW, we're generating a 400 megahertz wide DVB-S to X signal, in this case at a frequency of 1.325 gigahertz. And we're feeding this signal into our DUT. In this case, the DUT consists of a mixer and an amplifier. And the output signal goes through an attenuator and into the FSW. And on the FSW, uh, yeah, we can we can do many measurements with this setup. One of the possible measurements is using the amplifier measurement personality that we see right here. And what this personality does is compare the received signal against the known reference, the one in green here. And from this comparison, you can derive everything you need to do. So you see the frequency response, your know, channel response magnitude and phase, as well as the nonlinearities shown in the AM AM and phase deviation versus input power plots. And what you also get is an EVM measurement right down here. So uh, what I forgot to mention is as the DOT is converting a frequency, um, the SMW has uh, an output frequency of 1.325 gigahertz and the output frequency of the DUT, and this is where the FSW looks at, is 14.125 gigahertz. So you can do the measurements with frequency conversion DUTs as well. And what we see here are, uh, I'd say, all the traditional amplifier measurements that you want to do. So frequency response, nonlinear release, and even EVM measurements, um, you get them in one single shot and with exactly the signal that uh, the device on the test will see when it's operating. So this is uh, the way to measure the real performance of your DOT. So here, Florian, we're looking at the amplifier measurement um, where you're showing EVM and some channel response magnitude and phase and so on. Is there anything else that can be measured um, in this scenario using the real world signal? Yeah, you can also do system level tests. So you can use the, the same instruments, you can use the same signal, what's really important. And uh, by just switching to the next personality, you can do um, system level tests uh like so so using the same signal and you get a constellation diagram you get uh, an evm measurement a standard uh, compliant evm measurement for the dvbs to x standard that we're using and you even get a better measurement 
same setup and the same real world signal. And what about um, looking at the spectrum? Is it, what can we do there? I, I mean, you know, the, we're not just looking at a signal that's you know narrow band. There could be effects that we see wider wider band in the spectrum. Yeah, you can, of course, uh, have a look at the spectrum. And what you can also do is uh, do NPR, noise power ratio measurements. And uh, these are particularly easy to do uh, because you can, you only have to control the FSW. You don't have to touch the SMW. For example, if you want to specify a notch in the signal, then you can do this on the FSW. Go just to the configuration. You tell it to control the generator, and then you just specify the parameters of your notch, set the state to on, upload the notch settings to the generator, and the generator will apply a digital notch. And what you see here is the result of the notch signal at the output of the DUT. So it's very easy to do most power ratio measurements. So from the point of view of like setting up a test campaign, it would be really straightforward to configure these manually and even use the Skippy recorder on the analyzer and the generator to build the command sequence very easily and then automate that process over a number of many DUTs. Yeah, sure. So if you've done it once manually, you can record what you have done and reproduce it many times. That's a easy, straightforward process. Oh, perfect. Well, look, Florian, thank you very much for the insight into um, how to measure a LEO frequency converting satellite. So thank you very much for your time and I uh, hope everybody enjoys watching the video.